name's Anna and I'm a geologist and researcher at ICRAG and I'm trying to figure out why minerals grow in unusual places. But first, let's backtrack. This is a mobile phone. I'm sure you've all seen one before, but can you name all of the metals that are used to make up your mobile phone? Because there are a lot. Your mobile contains elements called technology metals. These are metals that are used to make things like computer chips, wires and batteries. Many of these metals are also used to make green energy technology. So there are elements in your mobile phone screen that are used to make solar panels and in the battery of your phone, just like in the batteries of electric cars. But where do these metals come from? Well, metals are found in minerals and minerals make up rocks. So I want you to imagine a rock as a sentence and the minerals are the words that make up that sentence and the metals are the letters within each word. Geologists such as myself try to understand what makes minerals grow so we can predict where to find more. So I'll give you an example. The world's largest deposit of copper and cobalt is in Central Africa. Here, copper and cobalt are found in minerals and many of these minerals grew from fluids such as salty water. But where did the copper and the cobalt come from? How did they dissolve in the water? And why did the metals get removed from the water and into the minerals? So my current research is focused on a blue mineral known as kyanite. Kyanite is thought to grow at high pressures and temperatures. In other words, a rock needs to be buried pretty deep for kyanite to grow. But in my samples, kyanite is found in rocks that has never been buried deep and has grown from salt water that also contains copper. So there's something unusual going on here and it's influencing where and why minerals grow. I want to find out what's going on to help us find out why these minerals are growing in strange places. By finding this out, we can potentially predict the locations of other technology metals growing in unusual locations throughout the world. Hi, I'm Chetan. I'm a geologist here at the Natural History Museum. I'm working with a group of scientists here trying to understand the formation of copper deposits and new methods to discover and extract copper in an efficient and sustainable way. As I'm sure you're aware, copper is an important mineral for society, from the infrastructure all around us to the wiring in our electronic devices. And copper is also becoming increasingly important as it's a key component in renewable energy sources like wind turbines and solar panels, and also electric vehicles. So an electric car requires about four times as much copper as a combustion engine car. At the museum, my research is focused on porphyry copper deposits, which are a type of copper deposit. And these are really important because they account for about 75% of global copper supply. And these form when molten rock or magma moves through the Earth's crust. And as it cools, it releases copper charged fluids, which accumulate to form copper ore, which is what we mine. And these rocks look a bit like this. So this is a rock from Chuquicamata in Chile, which is one of the world's largest copper mines. And the copper is held in this brassy metallic looking mineral you see here, which is chalcopyrite. And that's a copper sulfide mineral. And this rock contains about 2% copper and we'll crush it and process it to extract the pure copper from it. And this sort of high copper concentration is rare. So most rocks on our planet only contain about 0.01% copper. Here at the museum, we are determined to understand the processes ongoing in the Earth's mantle and crust that produce rocks like the one you see here. And only through understanding this, we'll be able to discover the resources that will be able to facilitate society's green transition. Hi everyone, my name is Aileen and I'm a researcher based in Ireland with ICRAG. I mostly spend my time looking at base metals like zinc, lead and copper from the Irish ore field and the African copper belt to figure out what led to their formation and how we can use this information to help us find more or vector towards other metal deposits. But why do we need to find more? Well, currently the world is trying to move toward a more sustainable one, with greener technologies becoming more and more common. For example, we have all seen new wind turbines, solar panels and electric vehicles pop up over the last few years. And many countries around the world have released climate strategies outlining how they plan to reduce emissions and meet the UN Sustainable Development Goal of Climate Action. Many of these plans require increasing the renewable energy infrastructure or the amount of electric vehicles on the road, but these are all very resource intensive technologies and so require lots of different types of metals, elements and other materials. 
Zinc, copper and cobalt are some of the most important metals for our green transition. But we don't actually currently have enough to meet the world's demand. So we need to study known deposits like those in Ireland and the African copper belt to help us understand and to predict where we can find more of these important resources. Hello everyone, I am Ling Li, a research fellow working at ICRAC UCD. Geology has brought me from China to Denmark and eventually to Ireland during the past 15 years. It has been a fantastic journey. It is exciting that I can use my expert knowledge to help to mitigate real-world challenges, such as sustainable supply of mineral resources and climate change. I research energy-critical metals. These are metals that are critically important to the production, transmission and storage of green energy. In particular, I'm interested in understanding the life cycle of energy critical metals, including where the energy critical metals are from, how they get accumulated in Earth's crust to become a deposit, and whether we can recycle mining waste for the recovery of critical metals. My current research project explores the energy critical metal potentials of the Irish zinc lead deposits in the Irish Midlands. The critical metals I'm particularly interested in are those that can be recovered as byproducts from processing the chief zinc ores, sphalerite. And these metals include germanium, gallium, and indium. We use a laser based technique to analyze the critical metal contents of the sphalerite as well as mine tailings. This will give us very accurate information of how many critical metals there are in the Irish zinc ores and tailings. So far, we have found a good amount of germanium, a metal that is used to make high-performance sonar cells. Our next questions are, where does the germanium come from? And how did it accumulate in the Irish Midlands? Keep an eye on our research to see if we find out. Hello, my name is Ana Santos. I am originally from Brazil and I came to the UK in 2014 to do a PhD at Bangor University. My background is in biotechnology, which is a broad area of biology that studies the use of biological systems and organisms by various industries in order to develop new products and new processes. For example, development of vaccines in medical biotechnology, biofuels in industrial biotechnology, and bioremediation of contaminated areas in environmental biotechnology. These are only a few of the many, many applications. My all-time favorite is environmental biotech. My PhD thesis looked at the development of a bioprocess to remove toxic metals from a water body generated by mining operations that had the potential to contaminate rivers in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. The process was developed at lab scale and the main players there were bacteria. I am now a research scientist working on a crocodile project, which has nothing to do with actual crocodiles. It's an acronym for recovery of cobalt using novel integrated technologies. In this project, I'm looking at developing a bioprocess to extract metals of economic interest, such as nickel and cobalt, from ores and mine waste using microorganisms, which is a definition of biomining. It is a more environmentally friendly technology that can be used as an alternative to traditional mineral processing. And it's not a surprise the bacteria can help in that too. They can be found in many different environments and sometimes they are already there at the mining site. As a microbiologist, my role is to study these microbes, understand how they work, and harness their metabolism, their activities, to develop a new process to extract metals from nature and new products for a sustainable future.